Hello and welcome to another video with Mimioni for Final Fantasy XIV. This is a quick dungeon guide to the bosses within the new Gimlet Dark Dungeon. The first boss is the Mark III B Magitek Colossus. This fight starts with your tank facing the Colossus away from the party, as his first ability is Jarring Blow. This is an attack that will hit players in front of the boss. This will then do moderate damage to your tank. The second ability you'll see is Wildfire Beam. This is where the boss will put purple AoE markers around players. Simply spread these around before they detonate. Soon you will see the boss's party trick. This is the Magitek Slash ability. The boss will mark a cone immediately in front of him, and as you can see the boss itself has a rotating set of arrows around its chest showing a direction. This means the boss will do a cone slash attack repeatedly in that direction. In that regard you just simply need to outpace the arrows standing the opposite side of where the slash is about to hit. He will actually revisit this attack later on where he will repeat it back to back. You will also see an ability called Exhaust. This is a line AoE to stand out of projected in a direction of his choosing. The boss will also do AoE damage to heal through with his Cerulean Vent ability that affects the whole room. At about 55% you'll see the Magitek Slash spam start to kick off in the second half of this fight where he will do the spinning conal attack repeatedly back to back, just keep moving. In this second half, you'll start to see Magitek Ray. This is a stack marker, so you must stack together to absorb the damage from this ability. At this point, the boss will continue with more line AoEs, more spinning slashes, more AoE cerulean vents, and more stack and spread markers until it dies. Next up, boss 2 is Prometheus the Drill Robot. This boss will always kick things off a few seconds after the pull with the ability Nitro Spin. The boss will spin around doing damage to the whole room and also leaves behind a fiery section on the outside, which you must avoid and come into the safe circle in the middle of a room. If you are slow, you'll get a burn damage over time debuff that's uncleansable by Asuna and you'll just have to let it run its course. Not long after the spin attack, the boss will use Oil Shower. You can see there's a safe conal area to stand in in front of the boss and everywhere else will be marked. At around 70% for us the boss disappeared and burrowed under the ground with his drills. At this point you need to look around the edges of a room for a section of wall that begins to glow. This is where the boss will jump out of and will shoot in a direct line across the entire arena. After that the boss will become attackable once again and you continue the fight. You'll start to now see an ability called Unbreakable Sermit Drill and this cast attack will hit your tank hard and is the main source of tank damage to heal in this fight. Needle Gun is an ability where he will attack anything in a cone in front of a boss and then it's essentially more of the same. You'll see more oil shower attacks and more nitro spins that just do damage. You will at some point also see freezing missile cast by the boss. These missiles don't immediately do anything and fly off into the sky. However, he will then transition into a second burrow attack. This time the freezing missiles will rain down on specified locations. These proximity explosions do more damage the closer you are to any one explosion. So if you stand in the center of a room you can avoid the majority of the damage, but at the same time you must also run to the sides just after the detonation because the boss is about to come out of the wall and charge the arena again. At this point the boss will be 20ish or so percent and will repeat many of the basic attacks from earlier until it eventually dies. Now on to boss number 3 and the final boss of this instance. This boss has two enemies in total, Ania Quo Soranus and Julia Quo Soranus, red and blue power ranger respectively. When you start the fight, Julia is your main target as Ania leaves the battlefield. Julia will start with the ability Artificial Plasma. This is an AoE ability damaging everyone in the room for about 13k damage. Once we fight Julia, Ania will be providing artillery support for her partner from outside this arena. You'll see line AoEs go from Ania across the room to avoid, whilst Julia casts her own abilities such as Innocence, which is a large scale tank buster. Next, you'll see Julia start to commence Airstrike, and she shouts, Ready the Ceruleum tanks. This is followed by Ania stating, Deploying now, and then several Ceruleum tanks on fire drop from the sky onto the arena. At this point, a player will be targeted with a line and a target AoE near them called Hairsbane. Simply move from the area she targets as it fades, because this will be followed up by a circular explosion. This then causes the tanks nearest the explosion to also make circular AoEs and then explode and so on until all of the Ceruleum tanks are gone in a chain reaction. At the same time as these explosions you're also trying to avoid Anya's line attack across the arena as well. 
Artificial Plasma v AoE and Anya's out of arena line attacks continue until eventually you see Julia jump to the center of a room and lay down both a cross shaped AoE and a series of circular AoEs from Anya that will explode as well. At this point the boss is around 15% or so and will use the basic abilities and more AoE stuff like Artificial Plasma until you reduce her health eventually to 1%, at which point she will leave the arena. The pair are then unattackable and decide to attack together with an ability called Crosshatch. This is a very difficult to see golden line that's drawn on the arena floor, which you're supposed to not stand in. Both bosses will then strike across these lines doing massive damage to anyone stood in them. Afterwards the second phase begins and and now you must fight Anya. Again, this time as Julia attacks from outside the arena. Hare's Bane makes a return, and if you're targeted, just move from where the marker fades to avoid an attack from Julia on the outside. A lot of Anya's attacks will chunk away at the tank, and she will now use moves like Delta Trance to do decent damage to her target. Then, when we come to the Commence Bombardment move again, and Anya begins to cast her version of the Order ability, you will see the bomb circles are much bigger to avoid this time, and the line AoE that was across in the previous phase is now a line attached to your character. At this point spread the lines out as best you can and try not to get people hit twice by your line as well as theirs and obviously don't stand in the circles. You will then notice a new ability from Julia on the outside of a the room. These blue crosses will appear on the sides but will after a few seconds slash across the arena. These produce four lines in a cross through the room to avoid. At this point, Anya will use Delta Trance on your tank again, which will chunk away at its health, and more hairs being targeted at players to avoid. A new move from Anya is then used called Stunning Sweep, that's a circular melee range AoE to avoid. More artificial plasma AoEs to heal through, and then when she reaches 1%, we also have a last ability here from Anya called Angry Salamander, which is just another fixed line AoE to avoid on top of these as well. Once the bosses become unattackable again, this marks the transition where the bosses will draw golden lines on the arena again, which you must avoid as they will strike across them. Only this time around, you have to spread these AoEs at the same time as a line attack, which can prove quite interesting. After which, at this point, they realize they have failed and decide to come back into the arena together. Only this time they regen to 20% health each and begin casting a final ability called Imperial Authority. You must now kill both Anya and Julia before this cast goes off or it will be an automatic wipe as the entire room explodes. It's not a particularly difficult DPS check but it is a DPS check regardless. Once defeated, you'll have yourself a clear of this instance, and I won't spoil any of the cutscenes, obviously, but just enjoy your run. Thank you kindly for watching this short guide, and I'll see you all next time.